In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent bit of sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts, that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive full pardon and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. <clears throat> o God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> Please be seated. <clears throat> The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, drawn from the four Gospels. <clears throat> when they had bound Jesus, they led him from Caiaphas to the Hall of Judgment and gave him over to Pontius Pilate the governor. It was early. They themselves did not go into the judgment hall so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, 
If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Then Pilate said to them, Take him then and judge him according to your law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. So the words of Jesus was fulfilled, signifying by what death he should die. <clears throat> the charges they brought against him were, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding us to pay taxes to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this for yourself, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Do you take me for a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have given you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would have fought that I should not be given over to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. I was born and I came into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in this man. The chief priests kept laying one charge after another against him, but he answered not a word. Pilate questioned him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many charges they lay against you. Jesus answered him not a word. Pilate was utterly amazed. He said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no case against this man. They pressed their charges more vehemently. He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. When he heard that he belonged in Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him on to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem for those days. When Herod saw Jesus, he was delighted, for he had long wished to see him because of what he had heard of him, and he hoped to see him do a miracle. He questioned Jesus repeatedly. But Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes stood there and vehemently accused him. Herod and his soldiers mocked him. They put a splendid robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends with each other that same day. For before this, they had been at enmity with each other. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people and said to them, You have brought this man before me as one subverting the people. See now. I have examined him before you and have found nothing in this man guilty of any of your charges against him, and neither did Herod, for his, he sent him back to us. Mark this, he has done nothing worthy of death. I will have him punished and release him. Now at the feast it was the governor's custom to release to the crowd any one prisoner whom they asked for. They had then a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. He was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection in the city. Pilate knew that it was out of malice that the chief priests handed Jesus over. Therefore, he said to them, Do you want me to release for you Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? The chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Pilate asked them again, Which of these two do you want me to release for you? And they cried out all together, saying, Away with this man and release for us Barabbas. While Pilate was sitting in the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Do not have anything to do with that man. I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Again Pilate addressed them, for he wished to release Jesus. He said to them, What shall I do then with Jesus who is called Christ? What shall I do with him whom you call the King of the Jews? They all cried out, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no guilt worthy of death in him. I will therefore punish him and let, and let him go. They cried out all the louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers of the governor led him away into the praetorium. They gathered the whole band of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a purple robe on him. 
When they had woven a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. They knelt down and did him homage. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know I find in him no guilt. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I do not find him guilty. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you know that I have power to crucify you and I have power to release you? Jesus answered, You would not have any power at all over me unless it had been given to you from above. For that reason, he who handed me over to you has the greater sin. This prompted Pilate to go on trying to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but rather a riot was underway, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this man. See to it yourselves. Then all the people responded, His blood be on us and on our children. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
before the Sanhedrin, the trial the night before, the accusations had been flung time and again, but they could not agree. Then it seemed they had something. He said, destroy the temple built with hands, and in three days you'll raise it again, not built by hands. But even that wasn't quite right. He said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it. So perhaps he's being tried for the sake of his death and resurrection. Jesus says not a word. Before Pilate, mostly doesn't speak. Before Herod, mostly doesn't speak. Before the Sanhedrin, mostly doesn't speak. But the high priest puts him under an oath before uh, the living God of heaven, are you the Christ? Jesus, knowing full well the outcome of such a confession, confesses indeed it is as he has spoken. And so for that, the high priest, who isn't supposed to tear his robes, tears his robes, screams blasphemy, lies before the living and holy God, later to say we have no God but Caesar, and convicts him of death. So enter our reading tonight. He's there because he's the Christ the promised Messiah, the Savior of the world, and for that reason he's convicted by the children of God, children of Israel, of death. They don't sleep much that night, uh, but they're there to meet Pilate first thing in the morning. You know very well he acts on behalf of Mother Rome, or the Holy Roman Empire. And so there in front of him, being convicted by the church, confessing he's the savior of the world, he's on trial before all the world, and the charge now is manipulated and changed somewhat the same. He's incited the people. As you know, the people like the lepers who were healed from their leprosy. He's incited the people like the blind when he gave them their sight. He's incited the people like the broken women in their bodies, in their spirits, when he casts out their demons when he heals their infirmities. He's incited the people, especially so by calling Lazarus out from the dead. He's done something against Caesar with regard to taxes. And in this forum, we'll say he's made himself out to be a king. So chief charge from Pilate then, as his cross declares, this one dies for being king of the Jews or king of all of God's people. The church crucifies him because he confesses to be the Christ and the state or all the world crucifies him because he's the king of God's people. It's the first question that Pilate asks him, who are you? What have you done? Are you a king then? Jesus says, look at me. Am I a threat here to you? Do I look like I ought to hang on a cross? Am I leading a rebellion? 
I trying to overthrow the state? Is my king a king like you know, Pilate? No, my kingdom's not of this world. My kingdom instead's hidden in this world, so the Christ hidden in his body, hidden in your believing, hidden in his suffering, hidden because he won't speak, because he won't avoid death, he won't avoid your redemption, and mine pierce him, though it might be. So the accusers, church, state, all the holy world, for that matter. The charge, he's the Christ. He's the king who rules over God's people. And mostly, unless he's bound before his Father in heaven, he utters not a word. The fierce accusers are so blinded by their hate that they compromise anything and everything. And such fallenness has the audacity to not enter for the sake of the Passover. They want to remain clean, even as they cry, His blood be upon us and our children. And so the world is blind in the face of all so many things that testify to the Almighty God in front of their faces. They're blind. On the other hand, while they're filled with anger, you have another, Pilate, who's quite frankly characterized by cowardice and avoidance and what's best for him. He sees and he knows Jesus speaks the truth. He does not threaten him whatsoever. I think he even acknowledges his place over Israel. And yet, what's good for me? Pilate asks. I don't find a charge in him. I'll send him over to Herod. Let him deal with him. I'll wash my hands of him. I'll ask if you want a horrible, horrible sinner or this Christ. Whatever I've got to do to avoid God Almighty in the flesh and how he and his person might affect me and my person. So unbelief reacts that way too. In the end, you know how it goes. His wife spoke better to him, but because it was the easiest way, he puts Jesus on the cross, and like Jesus foretells in Matthew's Gospel, he's lifted up and crucified by the Gentiles. Why doesn't he speak? Why doesn't he defend himself? Why doesn't he confess freely before Sanhedrin or Pilate or Herod? It's for the church's sake that she might be redeemed. It's for your sake that he who is silent would be glad to hear you speak this night freely carry your prayers before the Father in heaven who delights in hearing them for Christ's sake. If we wanted to accuse you, if we wanted to accuse me, the accusations are flying everywhere and many come your way and mine too. Paul writes to the Romans, especially of them, the law accuses us so that all of us must remain silent. Another place there in that letter, our consciences are always, always accusing us. Our thoughts assailing us. 
appears in Revelation, the holy angels could accuse us if it weren't for the sake of the Christ to bring them alongside of us. And John in his epistle says that we can accuse also one another. And all this rages within our souls. And those accusations could stick well, especially, you know, the devil loves to wag his tongue and it's seen there in the flesh when Jesus is on the cross. So for those who are accused, he stands silent to take our place guilty before the church, all the world, and guilty before the Father in heaven. He's like Isaac, willingly carrying the burden of his father to be the sacrifice to end all the accusations. The prophet Isaiah says, like a lamb before its shearers are silent, so he opens not his mouth. He's innocent, of course, holy, the only begotten son of the Father. And Pilate's virtually screaming as much. I found no charge in the man. But to convince you of his innocence, I'll have him whipped and turned loose. So the rationale of fallen humanity. Herod, who beheaded his cousin, Herod, who divorced one woman and stole another, Herod, who wants to see some miracle, gets nothing from Jesus save a call to repentance for the salvation of his soul, but no words. Herod, Gerhardt says, wraps him in a white robe and sends him back to Pilate so that Pilate's soldiers take his clothes off again and wrap him up in the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Herod wraps him in a white robe. It's as if to agree with Pilate. Yeah, he's innocent. He's blameless. He is without sin, and he's certainly in no need of death. But if he won't tickle my fancy, let's send him back to be crucified. And so the great hymnist writes, the lamb goes uncomplaining forth, the guilt of all men bearing, and laden with the sins of earth, with none other sharing. And so there Jesus, clothed in a white robe, clothed in a crown of thorns, clothed naked, but not ashamed to die for you and me goes that his innocence and his good confession that he's the Savior will be met with your good confession that he's your Savior and mine. The worst of all, one evangelist says of him he's a robber and a rebel leading a rebellion Another, he's a murderer. The worst of all is traded in exchange for the life of Jesus. You know his name, Barabbas. And so because he wouldn't speak, because he wouldn't shrink from the charge, and because he wouldn't come down from the cross, sinners go free. Barabbas has a new life. Barabbas is restored. Barabbas is bought back from death, the shame of all the community, by the blood of Jesus the Christ. 
And so the church put him on the cross, and the whole world agreed, and they did so because he was your Savior and mine, and because he wouldn't speak on Judgment Day, we will be able to. For the Father in Heaven, who loves us for the sake of this, his Son, and your brother and mine. Amen. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me, as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown.